Okay, let's say your loved one is giving you stuff. What do you do? You stress that they call a hotline, bring them to a support group, what? So don't be afraid to say, I've noticed these things and I'm worried about you. Also joining us today is psychologist and CEO of the renowned Dee Dee Hirsch Mental Health Services, Dr. Keita Curry. Doctor, what should someone consider when choosing a survivor group? Well, as you mentioned earlier, one thing that's really important is it's never too late to join a survivor group. And so I want to encourage everyone, if they've lost someone, to seek it out. And the kind of group to seek out would be one one that includes only people that have lost someone to suicide because it's a grief that is very different and to be with people that have the same loss creates a comfort at talking about these deep complicated feelings. The other thing is to be in a group with the people where you stay in the same group with the same people over time rather than it being a drop-in group because you form a bond with the people and it's a bond you see them grow, you get comfortable sharing and also sometimes it's a bond for a lifetime. And then last groups that are often run by therapists but it's also important that either the therapist or a co-leader be someone who's lost someone to suicide and been through a group because they offer hope. They are further along in the journey, which as you say never ends, but they're further along and they can say, I know you don't think you'll ever smile again or you'll ever laugh again, but I'm here to tell you it does come back. Well, I, I certainly implore everyone who needs it to seek out a group in their area and we'll have resources coming up later. When we come back, we're going to meet a young man who survived a suicide attempt and hear his amazing story and how he is saving lives. We'll be right back. tragedy that is suicide. We are back with the Hirsch Center and they were the first in the nation to have a suicide hotline. Dr. Curry, is suicide preventable? It almost always is. I would not say that it's always preventable because that would cause great heartache to people that have done everything they could. But in general, first of all, as the congresswoman mentioned, 90% of people that take their lives are suffering from a mental illness. So if we started by early in the schools, early in life, educating people, letting them know that there's no stigma, that a mental illness is just as common and treatable as blood pressure or asthma. We would do so much to prevent suicide. But even if a person reaches the point of thinking of taking their lives, there still is so much we can do. If we educated everybody, if we would teach people the warning signs. Yeah, please, what are the warning signs? First of all, talking about suicide. If a person says, I really, I just wish I could die, or I should just kill myself, I'm no good, or they may say things like, the world would be better off without me. You need to listen. Right. You, well, you need to listen and, and respond. So be accepting and helpful and say, I really am sorry about your pain. Let me help you. But another warning sign is giving away possessions. Sometimes, you know, a woman might give away her jewelry or a man might give away his baseball collection. So when people start giving away possessions, that can be a sign that they're thinking of ending their so lives. So what do you do? Okay, let's say your loved one is giving you stuff. I mean, what do you do? You s stress that they call a hotline? Bring them to a support group, what? Well, all of those would be great. Uh, the first thing is to talk to them, and as has been said earlier, suicide is a taboo subject, and a lot of people think that if you bring up suicide, you're going to put the idea in someone's head. That's just not true. So don't be afraid to say, I've noticed these things, and I'm worried about you. Are you feeling suicidal? And if they say, oh my gosh, no, they may be telling the truth or they may not, but it's not an insult to care about someone. Okay, wow, that's really, really good advice. Thank you. The question, how can parents distinguish between teenage angst and depression? Because we've been talking about that. I mean, right. Jordan was saying so eloquently about the fact that he felt like he was always in a, in a haze, that he was wearing sunglasses. It's very important for parents to be willing to talk to their kids because the rate of suicide attempts is highest among adolescents and young adults. So one, be prepared for your child's answer because your child may be having problems like drinking problems. Your child may be pregnant. They may be gay. And if you're not prepared to say, I love you, 
I'm going to have to get used to that, but we're going to get through this together. That's the first thing, is to talk to your child, tell them what you notice, ask them if they're okay. And if they go, I'm fine, which is, might be the answer, you can still say, well, I'm kind of worried about you, and this is why, and I want you to know that I'm here for you. And if you're still worried, and you, you can always say, we're going to go to the doctor together. We're going to go get a checkup. We go get checkups for everything else. Why shouldn't we get a checkup for our mental wellness? You're absolutely right. Thank you. After the break, our panel of experts will field the questions in our audience. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Emily wanted to share something. Um, well, I think that it's a great thing that we're talking about suicide. When I was 18, um, I was going to kill myself, actually. Um, I had no family support, no friends. Um, I'd actually been abused growing up by my family. And thankfully, I had a couple of close friends who recognized the warning signs. And I was over at their house daily, like, they just wanted to literally get to know me, good people. And so I told them what was going on, and now I'm alive, five years later. And I'm grateful to be so. Yes, and um, I just feel like anyone who's wanting to kill themselves, just focus on the positive, because even if you don't have family or anyone that you think is there for you, there really are. You just have to, even if it's yourself, okay. just love yourself first, and then you can love life. Oh. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. I'm glad you're here. I want to get to this woman in the back. Meet me halfway, please, please, please. I'm coming. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Ricky. I have a friend. She's been getting more and more like withdrawn from people and not engaging in activities and stuff that she would normally do and like how friends we'd go out every week. She's not. So you sense that she might be suicidal? Yeah, I'm wondering like how could I bring it up and talk to her or like get her to some meeting where I could have someone talk to her who could help her? Let me ask the panel. Dr. Curry? You know, you are noticing a warning sign, which is when people's behavior changes. They used to be outgoing and now they're isolated. They used to go to their weekly softball league and now they don't. So that can be a warning sign. And it's certainly a sign that something's going on. So be courageous and tell her you're worried about her. And if she does say that she's feeling suicidal, ask her if she's thinking about a place or a time or a method. And if so, be of support to her. Say, let me help you. Let me go to your house and take those pills. Let me call your mom, your husband, whatever, and tell them what's going on. Get other people involved. And, it, and also, you can call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline and get advice on how to talk to someone that you're worried about. All right, well, on that note, I'm going to put up the, Nash, the number for the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Remember, it is not just those contemplating suicide. It is also for friends and family who suspect a loved one might be in trouble. Yes, Congresswoman. Be sure that you start finding out local providers of mental health services. They may be in your backyard and you don't know it. You might call them and say, how do I help this individual connect? with because the foundation may be uh, a little bit further away this is immediate thank you thank you thank you thank you for sharing uh, we are out of time I want to thank all of our guests for being here for more information on the Ballas Foundation the Mental Health and Schools Act the Dede Hirsch Center and Dr. Posner's test go to the Ricky Lake Show .com. I would love to thank all of our guests for being here I mean really I've had chills from top to bottom from my friend Sadie to Mark Ballas and his mom to all of our guests today. Thank you so much for being here for such an important issue. See you next time. Bye-bye.